Day 145, Kirchhoff's Laws for Circuit Analysis. In general, we'll be using this technique of analyzing and simplifying circuits when we have multiple voltage sources or circuits that are a little bit more complex than the straightforward series and parallel resistors we've been analyzing for the past few days. There are two basic laws. First law, the current entering a junction equals the current leaving the junction. That's a conservation of charge principle. A junction, it's noted down here below, is a point where three more wires come together. The first diagram I have down here, and I'll highlight this in red, point A down here is a junction. We have three wires coming together, and point B is a junction. This is just an illustration, not a full circuit. And I'll come back to that one in a second. Well, I can do it right now. If you look at that diagram I just highlighted here at the bottom, but bottom line, what you have here is 0.5 amps heading this way into that junction. And you have 0.3 amps heading this way, and there are three wires. It's just simple arithmetic. There must be, in this pathway or that wire right there going from A to B, there must be 0 0.2 amps of current because 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.5. You have to account for all the current. So Kirchhoff's first law is the easier one to apply. It's very straightforward. Let's look at point B now. If we have 0 0.2 amps entering that junction and we have 0 0.1 amps going this way to the right, then this I sub X, this one going down, must be 0 0.1 amps as well. So you'll see this applied. It's the first thing that I look for when I'm analyzing these more complex circuits it's the easier rule to apply. The one that's a little bit tougher is the second rule or law, and that is the sum of all voltages in any circuit loop is equal to zero. And I'll define a loop here in a few minutes. But this is a conservation of energy statement, essentially, because voltage is the, the amount of energy per coulomb, so it's directly uh, related to energy, joules per coulomb. So I've already given you a, um, a little example of junctions. Point A and point B in this first diagram are junctions where three wires are coming together. Any path between two adjacent junctions is a branch and a loop is basically what that says. It's a non-overlapping path that returns to the same junction. Now the second example that I have, uh, I'll show you in a second how all three of those apply, but before I do that we're going to come up with the conventional signs which will be more evident when I do the examples. A, you're going to have negative voltages. Basically, that's the standard for, for resistors. They essentially use up energy or transfer energy to heat. Uh, negative voltage when going with the current. Positive voltage when going against the current. Batteries will be generally positive. The default, basically, is batteries will have positive voltage. They put energy into the system and resistors take energy out of the system. That's why it's quote-unquote negative. So let me give you the example with the second diagram I have here. Here's a circuit that we can analyze by Kirchhoff's laws. And one giveaway that we'll probably need to use Kirchhoff's laws is the fact that we have two batteries. We have B sub 1, that's 28 volts, on the lower left here, and B sub 3, another battery, battery or voltage source, which is 7 volts, on the lower right. So we cannot use our simple combinations of resistors in series and parallel to analyze this particular circuit. Now this circuit I pulled offline and all the values are pretty much filled in except for the resistors. We could calculate the resistance right now, but I'm not going to do that. I want to show you how the first two laws apply. They're also using unconventional current flow. If you look it up on the left, so I'm going to change this up, where we have uh, the 5 amps for I, R sub 1, the current going through resistor number 1 is 5 amps. Conventional current would dictate that that current, the 5 amps, goes actually this way towards this junction spot right here. So I'm going to call that junction A. Okay, that's where three wires come together. There's some current flowing that direction, not the direction that they have indicated, because current essentially flows from the positive part of a battery. The battery is pushing from its positive end, conventional direction, and this 28-volt battery is the stronger of the two batteries. I'll talk about that more late, later on. But essentially, though, if I call this point B down here, 
from B, if I follow along around from B up here and connect that, that, that red line represents current flow in that branch. That's a, that's a single path that goes from B to A. That's a branch. A and B are junctions. That red path that I just outlined is uh, a branch, and the red represents the current flowing in that branch from B to A, not the direction that they have indicated with the 5 amps. But that would be a 5 amp current everywhere in that branch. That's 5 amps. So if 5 amps goes from B over to A and it enters point A, now there's 5 amps that has to come out of there. Well, in this middle branch, they're showing you 4 amps going up, but really the 4 amps is going this way. So we have 4 amps going down from A to B. That's a branch. Once again, I'm reversing the arrow to show you the, the conventional way that most books will have the current flowing. A to B, 4 amps. So I'm showing you now Kirchhoff's first law. So if you have... 5 amps entering point A from the top left and 4 amps going down, that means there must be 1 amp, it's labeled 1 amp, but arrow in the wrong direction. In this branch over here on the far right, there's 1 amp. Because there's 5 amps at entering point A and 5 amps leaving point A. Same thing for point B. There's a 4 and a 1 amp going in, 5 amps going in, and 5 amps going out on the lower left. So everything satisfies Kirchhoff's first law. Now let's take a look at Kirchhoff's second law. We're not going to analyze this particular circuit deeply, but I want to show you that there are three loops here. A loop is a total path starting at one spot, getting back to the same spot. For example, if I start at A and go over this way, down, over, and up, that's a loop. If I go from A and go all the way around and get back to A, that's a loop. There are three loops in this particular system. I can start at A, go down, over, up, and back this way. That's a second loop. So there's two loops, those two on the right and left, the smaller ones. But then the third loop, and, and you don't count going backwards as a, as, a, as a different loop. In other words, taking either all those two blue loops that I've already done and go backwards with them is not another loop. That's just the same loop backwards. But let me pick a different color this time, black. If I start at A, all right, and go all the way around the outside here, that's a third loop. All the way around. So there are three loops in this particular circuit. Now, I know I've kind of gone over a lot of the numbers here. Hopefully you can still see them. But let me look at any one of those three loops. Let's look, look at this loop, uh, and let me label some other points here. Let's take the lower left-hand corner. Let's call this point C down here in the lower left, point C. And then point D in the upper left, point D. So if I take and analyze using Kirchhoff's second law, if I have loop, loop A, B, C, D, A. In other words, if I am outlining from A to B to C to D to A, that blue pathway on the left-hand loop in this circuit, if you go around that loop starting at A, uh, you would pass through resistor number 2, and then you would pass through point B, then to point C, and then up through battery number 1, up through resistor number 1, up to point D, and then back over to A. So that's a loop. And there are three components there. And the idea here is that those three components all have a voltage, and they must add up to zero. In other words, you can have VR sub 2 plus... V battery number one plus V resistor number one must be equal to zero. Their total voltages must add up to zero, which means that one of them or more than one of them has to be negative and one of them has to be positive because to have some numbers that add up to zero, some have to be positive, some have to be negative. Now, when you draw these on a diagram, basically you put always positive numbers on your diagram. But here's where the conventions come in and, it comes, and you'll need practice with this. But if I'm starting at A and going from A to B around this loop, I'll first encounter resistor number 2. What is the voltage of resistor number 2? Well, it's labeled as 8 volts, but it's labeled kind of as a positive number. But if you're following the actual current flow, which is that red arrow I have, the 4 amps going straight down, if I'm going with that arrow flow, you need to assign a negative 8 volts to that resistor. So that's negative 8 volts. I'm going to leave off the units for now. Plus, now, 
voltage of B1. So I go to point B over to point C and back up to point up through battery number one. Now, when you go from negative to positive in a battery, the way the battery is essentially pushing the current from its positive terminal, conventional, once again, this is a very conventional situation, that's positive 28 volts, 28 joules of energy per coulomb going into the system. And then plus V sub R1, but I'm going to hold off a second. Once again, if I'm going around this loop and I encounter resistor number one going with the red arrow, not the original black arrows that were there, but the red arrow of current flow that I've shown from C to D to A, or B to C to D to A, that resistor is 20 volts, but it's a negative 20 volts. So I can say plus a negative 20 volts or just go minus 20 volts equals zero. And yes, those all, that comes out to be zero. Zero equals zero. And you could do this for any loop in this particular system to, to verify Kirchhoff's second law. For example, I could take loop, um, let's say this upper right-hand corner over here, point E. That's point E in the upper left hand, upper right hand corner, and down in the upper lower right hand corner is point F. If I take loop A, E, F, B, A, if I go around that loop, which I already have with a blue highlighter on that right hand figure there, let's do this again. I'm going, I'm going to encounter three elements R sub 3, B sub 3, and R sub 2. In other words, the, v, the voltage of resistor number 3 plus the voltage of the battery number 3 plus the voltage of R sub 2 must add up to 0. They always have to add up to 0. And if I check this out here, once again, if I go from A to E and from E down to F, I encounter resistor number 3, and I'm going in the same direction as that red arrow that I have drawn, the flow of the current. So V sub R3 is going to be negative 1 volt. Negative 1. All right, now, here's where it gets a little difficult. I'm heading through this battery, in a sense. I'm hitting the positive side first, that long side, labeled with a plus, and going from positive to negative. So I'm going unconventionally, quote-unquote, through this battery. So that's going to be minus 7 volts. It's a negative 7 volts instead of a, the conventional positive for a battery, because I'm going backwards with my uh, movements here, with my loop. And then I go from F to B, from B to A. And once again, when I go from B to A, I'm going to counter resistor number 2. The question is, is that positive or negative 8 volts? Now, if you're looking at the math, you know it's got to be positive. But not, forgetting about the math for a second, if I'm going from B to A, but the red arrow in that branch, if I'm traveling from B to A, the red arrow, the 4 amp red arrow is down. I'm, I'm going against that red arrow. The path I'm following is the blue path, but the arrow is the current indicator in red that I have. That's pointing down, and I'm traveling upward from B to A, so this is unconventional as well for the resistor. Resistors would normally be negative 8 volts, but it's going to be plus 8 volts for that resistor. And once again, so mathematically that comes out to be zero in that loop. So there's two verifications of Kirchhoff's first, well, second law. And you could take the, the loop all the way around the outside as well. I'm going to do that one real fast, and I'm not going to just, I'm not going to write it down, but I'm just going to do it kind of off the cuff here. If I take the loop all the way around the outside, if I start at A to, well, I'll go A to E to F to B to C to D to A. So if I take that loop, if I take that loop, if I start at A, and I go from A to E uh, down toward F, I'm going to get the negative 1 volt again for that first resistor. I'm still going to have the situation I had before, minus 7, normally plus 7, but minus 7 for that battery. Then I go from F to B to C, back up through B. That's going to be plus my 28, because that's a positive now for that battery, because I'm going with the direction that that battery is pointing. It's pointing towards its positive pole. And then I'm also going conventionally through that resistor, the 20 volt uh, R sub 1 resistor, that's going to be the minus 20 as well. And that indeed does come out to be zero. So once again, going around that loop gets me the zero equals zero condition for Kirchhoff's second law. All right, now let's apply this to another example problem. 
here we have a circuit with some unknown resistors. So we can't combine them like we would have done a few days ago by simple parallel and series combinations. We do only have one voltage source, one battery, but we have unknown resistors. We'll be using Kirchhoff's laws to solve this particular problem. Now all these circles you see here, essentially you want to think of them as being invisible. They're just telling you where to take measurements. Basically they're voltmeters and ammeters. You'll see that the ammeters, A, A sub 1 and A sub 2, are inserted as kind of part of the circuit, like as a part of the wire. They're taking a measurement of how much current's flowing through that meter or that wire at that point. The voltmeters, like we've done in class, you use voltmeters in parallel. In other words, you touch both sides of your light bulb or your resistor to measure the voltage or the energy used, or sometimes called the voltage drop, for that particular resistor. For example, in this particular case, and once again, try to kind of like look at where the meters are, but try to erase them from your mind as part of the circuit. They're not really part of the circuit. They're just there to make measurements and then disappear. For example, V sub 1 is 12 volts. In other words, by this resistor R sub 1, that resistor has 12 volts, a potential difference. I'll just write that in. And you could, once again, if you could easily do this, you just erase the circle V sub 1, and we know the voltage for R sub 1. Same thing for V sub 2. It's 3 volts. So we have 3 volts down here for that resistor. And then A sub 1 is 5 amps. So it, A sub 1 is in a branch. The branch goes from D to E to F to A to B. So I know, based on given in the information, that A sub 1 is 5 amps. There, is, there are 5 amps flowing, I'm going to use blue this time, from point D. D is a junction. B and D are junction spots. So this arrow right here represents current flow. Flowing this way, it doesn't start at D. It's The current's flowing all the time once the circuit's active everywhere because the electrons are everywhere in all the wires. But there's a flow there. That blue line I just drew represents 5 amps of current. In other words, resistor number 4 has 5 amps of current. I will switch colors here. So there are 5 amps of current flowing through resistor number 4. Also through the battery. The battery is what's causing this to flow. It's pushing 5 amps of current, 5 coulombs per second. And resistor number 1 also has that same current flow, 5 amps of current. Now, because of Ohm's law, I can analyze this. In other words, I'll do them one at a time. I'll take sub V sub 1 equals I sub 1, R sub 1, the 1 referring to resistor number 1, which has its voltage, V sub 1, which was 12 volts. <coughs> Excuse me. 12 equals, I know it's 5 amps, times R sub 1. I can calculate R sub 1, and that's one quarter of what I need to get done. I want to find all four of my resistors. R sub 1 is 2.4 ohms. I really haven't even used Kirchhoff's laws yet. I've got R sub 1. And I can figure out basically R sub 4. I'll write it down like this. V sub 4 equals I sub 4, R sub 4. The voltage for this resistor was measured on meter number 2, voltmeter number 2, as 3 volts. The current was given from ammeter number 1, the 5 amps, times resistor number 4. So resistor number 4 is 0 0.6 ohms. Once again, I haven't even used Kirchhoff's laws yet. But now I think I'm going to need to do that. Let's go further here. Uh, meter number 2, ammeter number 2, shows me the current in the branch from B to C to D. The current going through resistor number 2. And once again, I know that the current has to be all going clockwise here because there's only one battery. The battery is going to be pushing everything clockwise. Its positive side, its positive side is the long side, negative side is short side. So we, everything does have to go clockwise here. So I do know that there's current going from B to C to D that is A sub 2, 3 amps. I have 3 amps let me use blue. Three amps going from here to here to there. That blue arrow I just drew is three amps. So I know there's three amps. Use black. 
3 amps of current flowing through resistor number 2. I don't know what its voltage is yet, but we'll get there. That's where, we're, where we'll use Kirchhoff's laws. But now that I know there's 3 amps coming from B to D, and there was 5 amps going into point B from my previous measurement, so if I'm looking at this junction right now, 5 amps from the left coming in, 3 amps going up from B to C, there must be 2 amps down this way, going through resistor number 3. That's 2 amps. That's Kirchhoff's first law. So now I have used Kirchhoff's first law. 2 amps plus 3 amps is 5 amps. Then it comes together at point D over here, and rejoints become 5 amps going through meter number 1. All right, now I do need to apply Kirchhoff's second law to get the voltage for resistor number two and resistor number three. And you can pick any loop you want, but I'm gonna pick the outer loop from A to B to C to D to E to F to A. That's a mouthful. So I'm gonna take loop A, B, C, D, E, F, A. When you do these on a test, make sure you stipulate which loop you're using, like I'm doing right there with the letters. So put extra letters on if you need. We really didn't need point D, but it's there. So I'm going all the way around from A to B to C to D to E to F to A, and they might always be alphabetical. In fact, a lot of times they're not. But when I, go, when I follow that path all the way around, all right, what I wanted, I'm going to highlight that and, and say black. I'm going to go all the way around from A, going around down, over, and back up to point A. All right, that's my path now. The black outlines the path. The blue shows me the current, and the good thing about this one is the currents are also going in that direction, so everything's conventional. I don't need to worry about anything unconventional. So resistors will be negative, and the battery will be positive, like it is conventionally. And I hit, I'll be hitting three resistors and one battery. So essentially I'm gonna have, so here we go. When I start at point A, I'll encounter resistor number one first. So bottom line is I'm going to have the voltage of resistor number one plus the, if I go from A to B to C, then I'll hit resistor number two, the voltage of resistor number two plus I go to C to D to F back, uh, to E to F, I'll hit resistor number four, voltage of resistor number four plus the voltage of the battery is going to be equal to zero. So I haven't put any negatives in yet, so now I'm going to do that. So now I'll pay closer attention. If I'm at A, going to B, the voltage of resistor number 1, it's already labeled as 12 volts, but on the diagrams you always put a positive number, but in the equation you're conventionally traveling with the flow of the, all the blue arrows, the current flows, so that's going to be a negative 12 volts. So negative 12, then uh, the voltage for R sub 2, that's going to be a negative as well. And I can deal with it two ways, but basically I'm just going to, I know it's going to be negative. I'm going to go minus VR2. I don't know what it is yet, but it's going to be minus something because I'm going with the flow of the blue arrow. And then down at the bottom, I go from D to F, E to F. I'm going to have minus 3 volts. I'm not putting any units for that resistor number 4. But then conventional with the battery is plus 20 volts for the battery equals zero. So I have four numbers there because I have four things, three resistors, one battery, and if you do the math there, it's fairly obvious that when you get all done here, VR2 equals five volts. Now in the equation I already took care of, I made it minus five volts in the previous step, so it was subtracted when I went around there. But bottom line on the diagram, this is a five volt potential difference for this resistor. Well, if it's a 5-volt potential difference, now I can do for, for that resistor, v, V2 for the resistor number 2 equals I2 times R sub 2. V2 is 5 volts. I sub 2 is 3 amps times R sub 2. So R sub 2 is 1.666 or 1.7 ohms. All right, now all we have left is R sub 3. Now we can apply the loop rule again, or we can notice that basically R2 and R3 are in parallel, so we're going to have the same voltage. They 
both join from point B to point D, so they're both 5 volts. Or, if you want to do, if you want to look at a loop here, just to practice Kirchhoff's second law, if you look at loop, if I go from B to C to D, let me put an extra letter on here in this lower left-hand corner in a diagram. Let's put um, G in there. If I go from B to C to D to G to B, loop B, C, D, G, B. If I go around that loop, all right, uh, you're going to have two resistors. You're going to have the voltage of resistor number 2, VR2, plus VR3 equals 0. Well, if I go around that loop, VR2, if I start at B, I'm going with the blue arrow, I get my negative 5 volts. And then, if I go from D to G, I'm going against the flow of that blue arrow that's pointing to the right through that resistor, but I'm traveling around that loop clockwise, and the blue arrow is going counterclockwise through resistor number 3. That's going to be plus 5 volts. That's unconventional. Like, resistors are normally negative voltage. This one's positive. And it has to work out that way because the two numbers, since there's two of them, you add them, they come out to be zero. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. But bottom line is they're both 5 volts, 5 volt potential difference. That's just showing how it's consistent with Kirchhoff's second law. So lastly here now, V, R, v let's just call it V3 equals I sub 3, R sub 3. That's 5 equals I3, which is 2 amps times resistor number 3, so R sub 3 is 2.5 ohms. So we figured out the last two resistors using Kirchhoff's laws and the first two resistors by basically Ohm's law. We've accomplished the task of calculating all four of those resistors. Some of these problems are kind of fun like this. In fact, it's kind of like solving a Sudoku puzzle. It, you know, this thing means this thing, and you put all the pieces together, and finally it all works out. You can double-check things. But Kirchhoff's laws are very powerful, and they don't require as many diagrams, which maybe is good news for some and not as good news for others. But there we go. We'll give you some more examples tomorrow on Kirchhoff's laws.